Hey guys, Pogo here with the next episode of the Survival Games mini series. Um, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and write the arena um, structure for managing the arenas, um, loading them in, loading all of the data from the uh, configuration file, and all that good stuff. But first, there's one uh, embarrassing mistake that I made in the settings manager class, and the mistake is that I forgot to write a save method. If you're going to do something like setting a um, value or creating a configuration section, you would obviously need to save the config or else the values wouldn't be written. Um, I'm surprised uh, that I completely forgot about including that, uh, and we're going to go ahead and just do that right now. It's really um, quick. I'm going to go ahead and make this private. Um, cause we don't want to have, uh, we don't want to worry about saving it. We're just going to call, um, like in the set method, we're going to call save. And then in the create section, we actually have to say configuration section section is equal to create section, then save, then return section. So we're going to call this save method. Now the first thing, or really all that we have to do in here, is um, we have to do this in a try and catch because it has to do with um, writing to files. I'm going to be lazy and print out the stack trace. It is just config.save, and then it wants the file, which is um, just file. So it's saving the file configuration to that file. And that's, that's all that we need to do. And then you do need to put in the try and catch because it might throw an I.O. exception if it can't save correctly. So that's all for the settings manager, just one little mistake that I made. Someone pointed it out in the comments of the last video. I forget exactly who that was, but thank you for pointing that out, and I fixed it now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and write um, an arena class uh, and an arena manager class that stores all of the um, arenas. Um, we're not going to fill in all of the methods yet. Um, and then also, this might be subject to change. If there's some certain thing that I decide to remove or add, then this class might change, but this is going to be a general outline. So the things that are going to be associated with the arena uh, would be the locations of all of the spawns, because we're going to have multiple spawns. In a survival games match, you would usually have each person uh, on their own little place. They can't move until the game starts, and then when it starts, they're able to move. So we're going to store um, all of the different spawn locations. Um, and then we also need to store a list of all of the players in that arena, and then um, the state of the arena, whether it's waiting, if it's in countdown, if it's already started, um, all of those different things. So first, let's go ahead and do our instance variables. We're going to have a private um, array list of location, which we're going to call spawns, and we're going to load this in from the configuration file, but this will just be all of the different possible spawns. And with this, we also need a private int. Well, we don't need to declare that there. I was going to make a spawn index so that when we go to um, do the spawns, Actually, no, we do need that. So we're going to make a private int called spawn index. This is going to be for um, going through the list of spawns because um, when the first player joins, we're going to get um, the location at position 0, uh, but then when the next player joins, we need to get the next position. We might actually remove that. We could just use um, players.size, the size method in the array list, uh, but we'll see. Then we also need a private array list player, um, which we'll call players, and then that will store all of the players in that given arena. And finally, I'll go ahead and put this at the top, I guess. We're going to have an arena state, which we'll call state. An arena state is going to be um, an enumerator. Now, if you don't know what an enumerator is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, watch my Java 101 video on enumerators. Um, also, one thing that I don't think I mentioned in this video is you can declare an enumerator within a class. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I just have this arena state enumerator. I could also put it in its own file, but I don't really want to. Um, so we'll first have waiting, so we're waiting for players to join. Um, countdown, if the countdown has started, and then started if the game is currently um, going on. 
good. So, next we're going to go ahead and make a constructor. It's going to be protected because we want it to be instantiatable by the Arena Manager class, but nothing else. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter if you made it public or not. And it's going to go ahead and take in a string um, called ID, or I guess this should probably just be an int. Um, should probably also store that private int ID. So the ID is going to be like the first arena that the person creates is going to be ID either zero or one, and then just each arena is going to have an ID associated with it. This is just for the configuration stuff. Um, you know, it doesn't the ID doesn't really matter, um, but as far as loading stuff, we need to know the correct um, location. Okay, so first of all, this dot ID is equal to ID. This dot state is equal to arena state dot waiting. So obviously, when we first start up, we're going to be uh, waiting. Then next, we're going to say this dot spawns is equal to new array list location. So we need to instantiate this, and then we'll go back in a minute and um, fill that in uh, with all the spawns. Um, Spawn index can be zero because we're going to obviously start at zero, and we might end up removing that. Players is equal to new array list player. Okay, good. So now we just need to load in the uh, spawns from the file. So right here we're going to say for um, string spawn id in settings manager dot get arenas dot get um, and then this is going to be um, for id dot spawns and this is going to be we need to say that this is a configuration section um, then we're gonna say get keys false and import configuration section so we're getting so ids dot spawns so if this is arena zero id is zero it would be zero dot spawns um, we're getting this as a configuration section, and then we're getting all of the keys. So in this, if it had, you know, uh, one, then spawns, then under that it had uh, zero, one, two, three, then this would go through and loop through for one, zero, one, two, three. So then we're going to go ahead and say configuration section section is equal to, um, and then let's just copy this, but it's going to be spawns dot spawn ID. So this is the section um, that contains the information and then we can just say or actually sorry we could just say location lock is equal to and then instead we're going to say location. This should work because I know that um, the config this um, file configuration has a get location method I believe. Let me just see config dot get um, oh maybe this one doesn't but uh, might be a different class. Uh, there is the ability to do that. So if this doesn't work, then we'll fix it. But um, we're just trying to load in the location. And I guess all we really need to do here is say um, spawns.add. Uh, then we're going to get it. So we're adding all of the spawns that are saved. Um, we'll go ahead and make a getter for the um, ID, just in case we need to um, get it, which we might not. Um, arena state get state so if we want to get the arena state we're not going to write a setter for get state for the um, arena state because it's going to be set in the arena class when the countdown starts it'll be set to countdown and when the countdown's over it'll be set to started that'll all happen in here then we're going to have um, actually we're not going to worry about the spawns because that's also going to be done in here we're going to have like a method for adding a player and then we're going to set them to the spawn and then we're going to um, public um, player array get players um, return players dot to array new player array players dot size. So we're just returning an array of players. And then finally, public boolean um, has player player p return players dot contains p so if you want to quickly check if, the, if there's a player in the if a particular player is in the arena uh, you can just use that method um, finally we'll go ahead and write a public void add player player p 
And that's all we're going to do for this for now. We're going to say players.add p. Then we're going to say p.teleport to um, spawns.get for players.size um, minus 1. And we actually don't need this. So what we're doing here um, is we are teleporting them to the spawn, then we're getting the spawn for the players dot size minus one. So remember, this is always one more than the greatest index. So if I call add player once, there would be one player. So it's going to teleport them to the spawn at position one minus one, which is zero. So the first spawn in there. That's just um, it'll always so that two players won't end up at the same spawn. Uh, and then you probably also want to write a check to say if we have 24 spawns, and then a 25th person tries to join. Uh, you probably don't want to allow them to do that, um, but I guess we'll just do that um, later. And then we're going to add some other things here, like the countdown, but I'm going to do that separately because the countdown is its own thing. Um, let's quickly write um, an arena manager class. This, like the settings manager, is going to be a singleton. However, unlike the settings manager, um, it is not. It's going to have one instance, not multiple. New arena manager, and then you know we'll just say private arena manager. Then public static arena manager get instance return instance. Um, then we're going to have a private array list of arena called arenas and a public void setup. This will be called once in the main, uh, which we'll go ahead and do right now. But then also if we go to add or remove an arena, we'll call it again, which could be a problem. But um, arenas.clear. So first we want to clear the arenas. Just in case there are already arenas in the array list, we don't want to have duplicates. Um, that probably won't ever be the case, but in case it is, uh, we just want to clear it. It's always good to make sure. Then we're going to say for string arena um, or a string ID. Let's we'll say arena ID in settings manager dot get um, arenas dot get, um, and then this is just going to be. Um, we need a, we need a method for, um, alright, let's just write, quickly write one more method, because we need to, um, get the keys, because the way that we're going to do this is the arenas file is just going to have all the keys right inside of it, so we're going to have, um, public, uh, what is this, I think it's like a set string, um, get keys, which will return config.getKeys false. That should be right. Okay, so then we're going to call get keys. So then this will be all the different keys. So if I have arenas 0, 1, 2, 3, then this will loop through for 0, 1, 2, 3. Arenas.add, new arena, and the ID is obviously going to be arena ID. So we're just, um, I spelled it wrong, arena ID. So we're obviously, we're just instantiating um, all of the arenas. Let's just make this a um, let's just make this a string because maybe you could also add support for um, uh, naming the arenas. So if you wanted to have the arenas each have a name, uh, you could also do that and then store that as the arena ID. Uh, whatever you want to do. Go ahead and have a public, not static, a public arena. Get arena for um, or let's just say string ID. So I'll have one that um, you can give an ID and then get the arena. So if I want to act on a particular arena, like if I want to add a spawn to arena zero, this is what I would use. And we would say um, for arena, arena, in arenas, if arena ugh, dot get ID dot equals ID return arena, and I'll just that up a little bit um, and then finally return null so 
If I give it an ID, it'll go through all the arenas, check to see if there's an ID match. If there is, it'll return that. If there are no IDs, if there are no arenas with that ID, it'll just return null. So that's good. Then we're going to have a get arena method that takes in a player. So if I want to get the arena um, in which a particular player is playing, I can do this. And we can copy this. And instead of this, we're just going to say if arena dot has player P, then return arena, otherwise return null. So if the player is playing in an arena, it will tell me which arena, otherwise it'll just return null. So I believe that's all we need to do. I have set up called in the on enable, which is very important. Um, we wrote the uh, arena class, to which we will add more um, methods and data probably. And then I also wrote the arena manager class um, that loads in all the arenas and then has the ability to get um, arenas given the ID of the arena or a player uh, to see in which arena the player is playing. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. If there's a feature that you want to see in the um, Bloodbath plugin, please let me know. I got comments about um, Bungie, and there were a couple of other cool comments. Um, this series can go on for as many videos as you guys have ideas. So once we make the base plugin and it works well, um, we can keep on adding different features to it. I will definitely get to Bungie and, of course, whatever else you guys mentioned. So thank you so much. See you guys with some more coding videos and, of course, some more survival games videos. Bye for now.